I've had some good days I've had some hills to climb I've had some weary days Good morning, church. Amen. Praise the Lord this morning. Amen. We thank God for all of God's people. We thank him for his mercy and his goodness that we once more and again might enter into the sanctuary of faithful believers. Thank God this morning. We thank all of you for being here. We thank you. God for giving me the strength that I might be able to once more mount the pulpit of God. We thank God for his angel of this house, Bishop Clarence R. Askins Jr. We thank him for the opportunity. So we give praise this morning to God, our Father. We give him all the praise. Uh, we thank uh, Sister Karan Williams this morning for providing us with the reading of the scripture. Amen. We thank her. We thank all of our musicians in the house uh, for rendering us glory to God in music. Amen. Amen. Praise God this morning. Amen. So we come to you this morning uh, as humble as we know how. To break the bread of life and we ask that you would sit in your tent doors and that you would pray with us as we prepare to preach God's word amen amen um, I wanted to share with you um, a story before we get into our text for this morning Um, one day, uh, there was a little boy named Joey, and he asked his father, he said, Dad, how much do you make an hour? And as you might expect, Joey's father became indignant. And he became very angry, and he responded, that's none of your business. How dare you ask me such a question? After Joey's father had calmed down, he realized he was a bit harsh and that because of his anger, he said some things, he'd done some things that maybe he thought he shouldn't have. And so he went to his son and he apologized to him. And his son said, well, dad, um, can I borrow $10? And the father said, well, what do you need $10 for? And his son anxiously reached under his pillow and began to bring out these crumpled up $1 bills and laid them on the bed and he said, I have $10. And his father said, well, if you have $10, why do you need 10 more? And he said, well, dad, you make $20 an hour. I have 10, and if I could borrow 10 from you, then just maybe I might be able to buy one hour of your quality 
peaceful and loving time. Hopefully you know where I'm going. Yes, sir. And to put a stamp on that, I will read for you the four scriptures that were already read in your hearing. It was read to you from the New Living Translation. I'll read it from the King James Version. And it reads in Romans chapter 8, verses 14 through 17, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption, yes, yes, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ if so be that we suffer with him that we may be also glorified together amen amen, amen. God has allowed me to take some liberty and to entitle this message Who's your daddy? Who's your daddy? In an earlier day of my life, if somebody asked me that, I might have been offended. Because that implies that I don't know who my father is. And how dare you ask me such a question? But I know none of you are offended because you all know who your daddy is. I'm sure of that. But just in case you don't, we want to walk this path of scripture. Here is a saying, any man can be a father but it takes someone special to be a daddy. While in definition both terms kind of mean the same, their implications have changed over time. A father is a male parent of the child, its progenitor. Traditional roles of a father suggest that the father acts in a protective, supportive, and responsible way toward their children. Fathers who are active in their children's lives play a role in how the children grow up. They have an impact on the child's behavior and their psychology and also their development. However, not all fathers are active in their children's lives. There are many fathers who believe that once the child is born, their role is over. Of course, they're still the child's father as they share DNA with the child, but they do not share responsibility in the child's growth and development. He might provide some level of support. However, uh, if he does not know his children, their uh, personalities, or know their likes and their dislikes, or their challenges from day to day at school and among their friends, chances are the children will not consider that male figure as their daddy. Who is your daddy? Dad is a term of affection and familiarity. Dad is someone who actively participates in the child's growth and development. A dad fulfills all the responsibilities associated with the role, personal as well as societal and cultural growth. The dad may or may not be a biological father. He may be the adopted father, the stepfather, or just a nurturing male figure in the child's life, such as a grandfather or an uncle or a cousin or a big brother or a 
family friend who fulfills some of the father's responsibility. Who is your daddy? Over the last few years, you see the term daddy, Minister Knight, has received a bad rap. That's because our younger generation produces babies as though they were apples falling from a tree. Children are being born bo void of the two-parent family and in many cases being raised by the mother, the grandmother, the grandfather, the aunt, the uncle, sometimes a close friend, but the father is MIA, missing in action. This, this, this term has come about called, and you know it very well, baby daddy. Baby daddy. We all know what that terms mean, but just in case you don't, uh, let's take a few moments and, and look at what that means in today's vernacular. A male that fathers a child outside of wedlock and is not involved in the upbringing and the support of that child is sometimes referred to as the baby daddy. So let me give it to you like this. The baby maker that refuses to be the family caretaker automatically becomes the family forsaker. I, I need to revisit that because I know some of you might have missed that. The baby maker yes, that refuses to be the family caretaker right. automatically becomes the family forsaker. We might put that another way. Baby making without family caretaking leaves the family forsaken. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, physically, everyone has only one father. Spiritually, you have one of two fathers. In John chapter 8, verse 44, Jesus told the Pharisees, you are the children of your father, the devil. The vast majority of people in the world today are children of the devil. Thank God that those of us who have been born again are children of the Most High God. For it is by faith that we enter into the family of God, and therefore we have God as our Father. Uh, uh, St. John chapter 1 verse 12 says, But as many as have received him, yes, to them gave he the power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. This verse speaks of acceptance into the family of God. However, our text for today, Romans chapter 8, deals with the adoption into the family of God. Uh, the acceptance into the family of God by the new birth, and there is position in the family of God by adoption. Even though these two concepts are different, they are uniquely related to one another and inseparable from one another. Acceptance and adoption. Every Christian knows that to get into the family of God, you must be born again. In John chapter 3, verse 3, Jesus says to Nicodemus, he says, verily, verily, I say unto thee, except the man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So, so, so few Christians, even those that attend church today, realize what they immediately become once they are born into the family of God. Who is your dad? One of the great doctrines in the New Testament is the doctrine of of adoption. This doctrine teaches us that not only have we been born into the family as children, but we have been adopted into the family of God as sons and daughters. Children 
in other words, sometimes called babes in Christ, cannot inherit the Father's wealth. Hmm. When you are a child, you are put into trusteeship of someone else. Therefore, you don't have access even if you have an inheritance. Being born again makes you a child of God, but you are not yet ready to inherit as a child. So, God has to adopt us as sons and daughters that we will be in full measure an heir of God and a joint heir with Jesus Christ. Adoption is necessary for our inheritance. But being born again, you get in. But just being born again doesn't give you access to the full measure of the inheritance. Stay with me. Uh, the reality of adoption. What do we mean scripturally when we say adoption? It is a legal term meaning the act of one person taking the child of another, making that child his own, and giving that child the same legal position and privilege as if that child was born to them naturally in their family. Spiritually. Spiritually, the Greek word for adoption Heothesia is actually a combination of two words. One word meaning son or child, and the other word meaning to place or to appoint. So when we are adopted into the family of God, uh, after being born again, we are positioned into the family as not a child, but as a grown son. Born again brings us in as a child. Being adopted changes our position to a full-grown son or daughter. That's important. Adoption is not the way we enter into the family. We get into the family by regeneration. When someone is born again, they immediately become a new creation. That is to say, you receive a new nature. When somebody adopts a child, they can uh, give that child a home, they can give that child their last name, they can give that child their address, they can give that child an inheritance, but they cannot, they cannot give the adopted child their nature because that child wasn't born to them biologically. Once we become a new person in Christ, not only do we receive a new position, but we also receive a new nature because my Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. I am an heir of God and a joint heir with Jesus Christ. That's important to understand because so everything that belongs to Jesus belongs to me. I'm a joint heir. I was born into the family and God wrapped my new birth into his adoption. That means that I have his name, I have his nature, I have his wealth, I have his peace, I have his joy, I have his mercy, and I have his forgiveness. are mine even at the instance of being born again I have it all it all belongs to me and hopefully it belongs to you who is your daddy important question and maybe when we get done with this sermon you'll know who your daddy is uh, there, there, there are some rewards to this thing called adoption. Spiritual, supernatural leadership of the Holy Spirit provides us a benefit of being adopted. How do, how do we know that? Because it's, it's, it's right here in the text in, in, in verse 17. And it says, if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, and so be that we suffer with him that we may be also be glorified with him. When we are adopted, we are joint heirs with Jesus Christ. Two characteristics of the true child of God. 
The believer will be steered by the Holy Spirit and submissive to the will of the Holy Spirit. God also gives us supernatural liberty. Supernatural liberty. How do we know that? Because verse 14, 15 in the text of Romans chapter 8, it says, For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of what? Of adoption. Whereby we are then allowed to cry, Abba, Father. Uh, the sinner, the sinner, none of you in here, I'm not talking to you. The sinner lives in fear. But the believer lives by faith. 2 Timothy 1.7 says, God have not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. The spirit of fear is driven by the need to control. Oh, let me say that again because somebody missed it. The spirit of fear is driven by the, the need to control. Obsession with control is born out of the spirit of fear. An obsession with control has its roots in a deep-seated sense of insecurity. In other words, we fear that which we do not know or do not understand. And we therefore want to control it and everything for fear of losing control. Mm. Mighty quiet, but that's okay. Uh, do you realize how much God loves you? So much so that he's given you the privilege, once you're born again and adopted into his family, of not only calling him father, but calling him daddy. Yeah. Who is your daddy? Yeah. So much so that he wants the kind of relationship with you that you can call him daddy. When the most intimate relationship between you and God is absent, you uh, 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 come to him with a lot of these and thous and therefores and here unto. All that's nice, but that's formal speak. When you have a close relationship with God, you can call on him like you talk to your dad. You can say, uh, Daddy, I'm having a bad day. Please keep me from my presumptuous ways because I might do something to somebody else or even harm myself. Uh, my neighborhood is in turmoil and danger. Daddy, please station your angels around every side of my bed during my nighttime hours. He that keepeth thee shall not slumber nor sleep. He will go to sleep with you at night. He will wake up with you in the morning because he is your dad. Uh, the Bible says, consider the birds. They neither sow nor reap. They don't gather into bonds. Yet your heavenly father, he feeds them. Consider, consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they toil not, neither do they spin. Yet I say unto you that even Solomon is not in the glory of these arrayed like the lilies of the field. Yeah. You see, the lilies of the field and the birds of the air, they are creations of God, but we are made in the image of God, and therefore we can call him daddy. Okay. All right. well, well, the lilies of the field and the birds of the air, they flap their wings and they bow their flowers to God, but they can't call him daddy. Yeah. God has given us a special privilege. Yes, he has. He's given us a special position yes. in Christ. He's given us a special relationship yes. in Christ. Therefore, we don't have to call him father. We can call him dad. Yes. Who is your dad yes. this morning? Yes. For you see, we have a sweet legacy in the family of God. The moment uh, you and I are born again, we immediately inherit everything that God has to offer. As born again believers, we are wealthy 
happier than our wildest dreams. We have the riches of his grace. We have the riches of his wisdom and the riches of his mercy. Furthermore, we have a future inheritance that moths and rust cannot corrupt and thieves cannot break in to steal. We can call him daddy. We can call him daddy. On earth, on earth, you see, if there are multiple heirs of an estate, the proceeds will be divided among the heirs so that each heir would only receive a fraction of the estate. That's an earthly inheritance. The inheritance of heaven is not under such restrictions. Every adopted child will get the full measure of God's inheritance. Why? Because he is our daddy. And we are joint heirs with his son, Jesus Christ. So we share in everything that the son received. We are due to receive as well. We have an inheritance today. We have an inheritance in the future. And all of it in full measure belongs to his children. Who is your dad? Who is your dad? Who is your dad? It didn't take us long to get from father to daddy. And now that we know he's our dad, we can call him so. We can talk to him as our dad. We can have personal, intimate time with the father as our daddy. Because the relationship has changed from just being born again to being adopted. And now that we are adopted, we're in the family. We have a special position in Christ. We can sit right next to him. We don't have to sit at the opposite side of the table. We can sit on the right and we can sit on the left. We can address him as daddy. We can call him in a more intimate name than just father. For you see, anyone can father a child, but not every father is a daddy. A dog can father a pup. That don't make the dog the pup's daddy. It's a special thing to understand who your daddy is. So who is your dad? He's the first and the last. He's the beginning and the end. He's the keeper of creation and the creation of all. He is the architect of the universe. He is the manager of it all. He always was, he always is, and he always will be. Unmoved, unchanged, never undone. He is bruised but brought healing. He was pierced but he brought pain as well. He was persecuted but he brought freedom. He was dead. But it brings life. He is risen, but it brings power. The world can't understand him. Armies can't defeat him. Schools can't explain him. The world leaders can't ignore him. Herod couldn't kill him. And Nero couldn't crush him. The new age can't replace him. He is the light. He is the love. He is the longevity. He is the Lord of all. your goodness. He is your kindness. He is the faithfulness.
the Father sits high and he looks low, but is he your dad? He knows you're going out and you're coming in, but is he your dad? He gives you life. He gives you strength. He gives you all of that and more, but is he your dad? Can you cry, Abba, Father? Is he your dad? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. He fathered us. He adopted us. He brought us in to a special position in his family. That we are no longer babes in Christ, but we are full grown sons and daughters in his kingdom. Promised to receive the inheritance of his son because we are joint heirs with Jesus Christ. Yeah. There might be somebody under the sound of my voice that can't call him daddy. Why? Because you may not know him. And if you don't know him, we give you a grand opportunity this morning. An opportunity to receive Christ as your Lord and Savior, that you might be joined heirs with him, that you might have the same rights and privileges to God, his Father, as we all do who are born again. You may not know that Jesus Christ, he came from heaven to earth. He came from the earth to the cross and from the cross to the grave and from the grave to the sky and now he sits high and he looks low making intercession for you and for me he sits at the right hand of the father pleading our case from day to day he shed all of his blood that we might be covered in his blood and redeemed from the slave market of sin that you and I might know that we are in right fellowship with God our Father so much so that we can call him daddy if you want to call him daddy this morning all you need to do is come to Christ and come to Christ now if you can't walk this aisle you can raise your hand and someone will receive you and explain the gospel of Jesus Christ have all born again believers this day and if we do there may be somebody in our midst this morning that does not have a church home maybe you don't have a place to worship and fellowship with like same believers maybe you don't have a place where you can praise God's name maybe you don't have a place where you can call your father daddy if you're looking for that place the bishop of this great house would gladly receive you with open arms that you might partake of this fellowship, that you might be made in right standing in this church and also in God's eyesight. If you're looking for a place where you can uh, hear the word of God, that you can learn the word of God, that you can pray with like saying believers, that you can worship with like saying believers, Philadelphia Christian Church Ministries is the place for you. Is there one who would join us this day? Amen, amen, and amen.